All right, guys. Hello. So we just done our prayer. We are all ready to welcome Giselle, Giselle on one night, another night of Pasch with our mentors, with our um, guides from the house, with Jesus, with God. Welcome, Giselle. Amen. So welcome everyone that uh, is, that is here <coughs> present uh, live and also everyone that is watching that at any time. Um, we, we definitely can feel you, your energy, um, even though we are not in the same um, perceived time. So welcome. And um, we just hope that you enjoyed this lecture. So today we're going to talk about um, a topic that's quite present in um, our daily lives, and the topic is envy. We're going to be using uh, the the book um, "The Pains of the Soul" from by Hamed as the the main source for this lecture. So the concepts and the ideas that Hamed presented in this book. And we have um, a subtitle uh, that is called The Magic of Loving Your Enemy. Is everyone being able to see the, the presentation? Yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. So when I first uh, look at this topic, um, what came to my mind was, um, a saying um, in Portuguese in Brazil that is also uh, it also exists in English, which is the grass is always green and on the other side. And then in Portuguese would say, um, how would you say? Grama do vizinho é sempre mais verde, something like this. So um, it came to my mind that because. Um, that's what, to, for, to me, you know, Envy was about. That, that's a picture that Envy, um, you know, a picture that I got when I first thought about this. So um, then I started researching a little bit about this Envy feeling, or, or actually this, um, this perception of that the grass is always greener on the other side. So this perception. And funny enough, um, this proverb is also true for animals. <laughs> so <laughs> it seems that the animals also <laughs> think that the green, the grass is greener on the other side, you know? And that's a, just a uh, just few of the pictures I found. If you go and Google, you see very funny pictures and some cartoons about it as well. So. It's just to to um, to bring the, into that bring the attention to this that is if the animals also think the grass is is greener on the other side of the fence so maybe maybe it's a natural perception huh? and that's what we're going to explore here and is that a nat natural perception where does it come from why we feel this way and now and and it is is that true. That's, that's what we're going to explore here. So envy by Hamid. Hamid described envy as an emotion, uh, an emotion that is present in different aspects of, uh, in our daily life and in our society as well, the society where, where we live, in which we live. He says that the attitudes like hostility, antagonism, often disguise the envy feeling. So envy is actually the root of other feelings. Huh? So we feel the envy is there in the base and the root, but then we end up feeling antagonism and hostility on top of this feeling of envy. Hamed also, um, relates envy with 
Oh, sorry. That's that's what I want to do. He relay he relates envy with uh, a concept that I had to kind of adapt to English because in Portuguese that would be the prepotencia da competição, prepotencia da competição, and it was it's very hard to translate literally. It would not make sense. So, with the help of my partner, we came to this um, with this term called competition competitive superiority and probably Irina knows a little bit about that because I found I found some mentions about this in um, psychology as well and not talking about that and, and exploring what is a competitive superiority or complex or um, in this way so what he means with that is it describes someone that presents themselves as superior when in reality they feel inferior yeah. so that then then may lead to attacks no armed with sarcasm irony um irony irony irony, irony. irony. in an attempt to hide their own discontentment you no know, their own unhappiness so that's what he meant about that he also mentions some um, difference between envy and jealousy, although, although they they are used in the same context many, many times. What is jealousy and what's envy? So just to differentiate that, he, he says that, for example, um, usually religion religious conventions tells us that uh, we should we should not feel envy because envy is usually related to greed. On the other hand, uh, jealousy is usually related to love or relationships. So it's more abstract. So it tends to be accepted, he says. He says we, we tend to accept, to think that's okay to feel jealous because it's like a sign of admiration or love. Um, we know Jackson, that is also a sign of attachment, isn't it? But uh, but yeah, but that would be the difference between envy and, and jealous. But they really used in similar contexts. And I had the impression from Hamed that um, neither envy or jealous was actually okay. Um, Hamed also states that um, that the emotion of envy is actually an innate emotion. So it's a natural emotion. It is um, like instinctive and natural to all creatures. So now then we explain the, the animals that are eating uh, across the fence. Um, and he says it's not learned by necessity because some of the emotions, some of the behaviors and attitudes we learn by necessity as we evolved as humans. But this one, he says, no, there's actually an innate, it's natural to feel this way. Um, for example, he mentions that uh, when a new baby arrives, a newborn arrive in the family, um, naturally starts receiving more attention because it needs more attention. You know, it's the, the little brother and needs more attention. The big brother or sister, they may feel envy uh, in that, with that uh, envy of that attention and um, or the comparison also that people make because that's another thing that happens when a new uh, child comes in um, when they have more than one child in a family people compare oh this is is smart or is 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 um, um, more talkative or so on so those comparisons start happening and naturally the children the children may feel envy of of um, some quality that are are um, labeled to the other other sibling, you know. So they, he just mentioned that to say it is something natural that even ch children that is just um, starting their life they they feel naturally. Um, so he also acknowledged that every children is different. So it, it's um, we we understand that parents who cannot treat both, you know, all, all the children the same way. Sometimes you need to treat children different ways. And that's what ended up causing that. 
Um, but he said that um, these attitudes uh, that naturally trigger envy in children may times, may sometimes produce insecure adults who will carry on the feeling of inferiority and envy of others if that's not overcome with maturity. So what I mean here is, he um, he thinks he says it's a natural feeling. You know, you, you, if you're a child, you just may may manifest that feeling, but over time, as you grow, you should overcome it. You know, you should as you understand more things, you should overcome. But some people will not overcome. Some people will not be equipped to overcome it. So in this way, they will be turning to insecure adults that will perpetuate that feeling, you know, throughout their lives. And then, of course, what, what happens is they live a life and desiring to have what others have. So that starts being a habit, you know, feeling insecure and, and desiring what other people have to try to um, catch up, I would say. But we have more about that. Okay, so Hamed also mentioned that uh, envy originates in the need to constantly compare with others, which leads us to compete for superiority. So he talks about we as um, humans, we have this need to keep comparing ourselves with, with other people and, and in comparing also competing. Because when I compare, um, then, I will label inferior or better or worse or inferior or superior. And then from that labeling, from that conclusion, then comes competition, I want to be superior. Hamed says that in comparison, so that's what he said. So he says that in comparison, the man is unaware of the fact of his uniqueness, possessor of intimate expressions completely different from other beings. So what he means here is that we are unique, um, but we tend to be, to want to be the same. Huh? So in comparing, we are just um, denying or ignoring our un uniqueness and all the, the beauty of the uniqueness that we have as individuals. Uh, we know that we, we have similarities, of course we have similarities, but we also have distinct experiences. We have just different missions in life. You now our journey is different. So we, rather than um, honoring that, he says we keep comparing and trying to then um, be the same or better than others. So yeah, so that's as I said, so we, we are, you know, the diversity is beauty and um, we have different experiences and missions and that's for a reason. So in the spiritism, we know that, you know, we have a particular experience in life that we might have designed it ourselves, you know, and that's, and that's a bit crazy because if we believe that we design our experience, and then now we come here and we want to be like the other. We have, I want to be, I want to have their experience. I want to have a real experience. I don't have to have my experience, but I design my experience. I help that with that, isn't it? That's how we believe. So in this, it's for a reason. And, but he says that it's okay, you know, like um, it's okay to be, to want to be, to do your best. It's okay to, to want to thrive. But it's just the, the thing about comparing, you know, try this, being your best in your journey is different than wanting someone else's journey because you think that journey is better, you know. And then I have this saying from Sadhguru. So Sadhguru is an Indian guru. I, I watch it and listen to him sometimes. And I was listening to him the other day and I just saw his saying 
that getting pleasure in the fact that you are better than someone else is the same as enjoying someone else's failure. So that's he saying that. But if you think about it, and um, it's kind of the same, isn't it? Like if if I'm I'm enjoying being better than you, I'm also enjoying that you are not, you know. So if I enjoy that I I won and you lost then I'm joined that you lost. So it, it is not, there is not, we cannot deny that. You no, know, it may say, oh, it's not intentional. I'm not, I'm not really enjoying, but naturally that's what happened. So all creations in the universe, animals, plants, etc., strive for their best. So it's okay to strive to be our best, as I said before. But why we are always concerned that someone is behind or ahead of us? So if you look in the nature, you know, does the tree feel more important than the grass? Yeah. Does, do we think that the tree is more important than the grass? Actually, we, we don't really go there. I mean, in some situations, we may think that you know, it's better to have a tree here than the grass, but in the whole picture, in the big picture, you know, they, the, the nature just do what they, they need to do. They try to do their best. The tree will try to, to do their best and the grass will try to do their best. They are not much concerned about each other, you know. They know their purpose, their mission, and that's it. And they just strive to be the best. And every, every, um, um, creature in the nature does that too. Of course, there are some instinctive competition, for example, among, among, among animals, for example, to conquer leadership of a group, you know, or maybe, uh, maybe that's actually the orange of our, our needs for competition. Maybe that's the instinct, that's me saying that, because we can observe in the, in the animal um, world that some animals will compete for leadership. Now that's part of that instinct. Um, and, you know, try to be the better or the stronger. Um, some animals must be the stronger so they, they can have more um, females to procreate and so on. So it's part of the, but they are, you know, in a different level, you know, we are humans. So we, we have rationalized so many things already in, in our evolution. No, and um, so this instinctive competition, is it really necessary now? Is it benefiting us in any, any way? That's the question I think we want to reflect. So we uh, humans that we ought to denominate intelligent creatures that, as I said, we are always concerned about someone being ahead or behind, naturally. I have to say, I catch myself in this situation many, many times. I look around, I look around. Do I compare myself in my life and my, in my belongings? In my, yeah, naturally I end up doing. Even though I stop and think about it. Oh, mm, let's go back to, you know, to my, um, um, my beliefs, but, Naturally, it happens. You, know, you, you see big car Mercedes passing by. Wow, you know, look at inside, look who is in there. What does they have? I don't. Why, why cannot have that? So that's in material world, but you can then move that to many other ways in health wise, you know. We are always comparing why I, I have this situation, another person doesn't, why other way around. And um, so, yeah, so we do that. Um, and it's a permanent state for us. So that's why it's so good, this, this topic and this lecture, that just for us to stop and reflect, you know. We do that naturally, but do we need to do? And is that a better way? So 
So um, Hamed says, well, that's Hamed says that um, the basis, what's the base? So responding to the question, what, is, what are the basis of this comparison competition? No? What is uh, to be, what, what does it mean to be ahead or behind? What does it, what is that to be ahead or behind? Because that's another thing, you know? That's, that's my perception, what is ahead or is behind, uh, what's better and worse, isn't it? How do I know I am ahead or I am behind? in this comparison. How do I know? Where do I take this conclusion from? And so what Hamed says is that the concepts of ab abnormality, normality, super natural naturality, and paranormality, all those concepts and, and many other concepts that we use in comparison and labeling in our society, they are the results of the human incomprehension based on so-called comparison. So what he means is um, we, we do that because we do not comprehend you know, the, the, the true, the real true behind everything that's happening with us, with others. And we don't understand, we don't know, we forget when we incarnate. So we start labeling and creating those standards, you know, and and uh, baselines to compare. And then based on those baselines and standards, we start this competition and comparison game. Yeah. The other thing he says is the absence of the spiritual maturity leads us to label in a humiliating and pretentious way. Religions, beliefs, uh, the heterogeneity of races, the custom of certain people, different sexual trends, innovative social movements, decisions, behaviors, the success of others and many other things. So that's what Hamed is saying and that's what we do. So as I said before, we end up creating those baselines and standards and concepts and labels. And then we start living with that base. But who actually you know, invented that. How about if we um, were born again in a society that there was no concept? Would we be doing this type of cooperation the same way? And talk about society then. We usually buy other people's idea in this society. Yeah? ideas, agendas, to make our own basis for comparison, competition, and seeking to be the same or better. So I put here a picture that we re, um, uh, re, uh, mind or resemble, resemble um, the social media. Huh? That is very much in, in, in place in the game this, this uh, current um, time. So if you think about the social media in general, you know, they play a large role in selling us ideas and even values. As long as we compare ourselves with, or with others, um, we will always be seeking something, isn't it? So seeking what's, what's the best or we, what has more likes, what has more comments, if you go to YouTube, Oh, you have to have many comments if you have a YouTube channel and, and likes and, and other, so then you can be better than others in that, in that scenario and maybe perhaps get more profit from whatever you're doing. So we are just living this society that's feeding us with this thing about seeking um, more and comparing, comparing with others in so many other ways. And if you think about the school model we have, the work model we have, if we go back to the school model we have, how, how does school work? It's not about comparing as well. How about those awards at school? You know, the, the child of the week, um, you know, I got more um, uh, a better grade than, than someone else. I'm the first in the school. In Brazil, we have the, um, the vestibular, you know, the, the, the test that 
um, everyone needs to to do to get into unit and how that is what that is that's a competition and comparing with some specific baseline so we live in this society that we are always always doing that uh, so this society is responsible for giving us the model of the success model of success what is success and we are raised to believe in a specific way accepted by our society and pursue determinate goals. If we dare to walk a different path, we may be labeled as a failure. So sometimes we envy other people's achievements or other people when they achieve those goals set by the society, even though we know they were never our own but we envy being accepted. Now we also want to be accepted by the society. We're also being labeled by the society as success. So what is the recipe? Right? So we go after the recipe for that. And we envy people that have the recipe or follow the recipe and got there. If, and Hamed actually uh, says that if we uh, would accept ourselves as we are, you know, I'll accept our particular circumstances, then things would be different. Because if we do, there is nothing to really envy in other, because I'm living my experience and I'm accepting and honoring my experience. So why am I gonna envy others, other people's experience? And then, and then there is another another interesting aspect of that because um, sometimes people envy each other in a different way, and um, they always think that you know the grass is greener in the in the other side of the fence. So I, I think that you know die's grass is green and die will think my grass is green now so i think i'm going to be happy if i have that grass and that she is looking at my grass so we are actually never happy but but we also are not using the same baseline to comparison because we created our own anyway and we feel inferior when we compare and we want don't want to feel this way so what the other has has, um, has looks much better and uh, we feel incomplete without that thing. So her grass looks better. I want her grass. In, until I have that grass, I am not complete. I don't feel complete, I feel incomplete because I don't accept my circumstance. We don't accept, accept our circumstance. There will always be something always is something missing to achieve completeness and happiness and peace. Either it's gonna be a new house, a new car, the perfect relationship, which I don't think exists, but keep going, looking and so on. We feel incomplete in the moment, every moment and seeking completeness outside in the material world, seeking the completeness on the other side of the fence. Sometimes we don't even pay a good look and good attention to our side of the fence. We are just so worried and preoccupied with the other side of the fence. So Hamad says, as long as, as we do that, as long as we keep looking at, you know, over the fence and not accepting and looking our own experience, they're always going to be in completeness, always going to be in happiness. And if, if I get the car and I continue to look over the fence, there will be another car I want, another house I want. And what does that mean then? What happens if you keep doing that or what we just already done because we've done that, we've been doing that for so long. So what does that bring us? What another feeling? What is the next feeling or the 
main feeling that would bring us. And that is that we feel disconnected from our inner self. Of course, we feel disconnected from our inner self. We are not looking into our inner selves. We are looking at other people or other circumstances or across the face. So how can I feel connected with inner self and not even looking at it? So the one that is um, and has always been complete in its own terms. So our inner self has always been complete, never incomplete. Because our inner self is complete in its own terms. It doesn't matter what the outside world says. It doesn't matter how it looks. It just matters to be. And our inner self, our spirit just is. And as is, is complete. At that particular you know, circumstance. But we forgot who we are. We incarnate, we forget who we are and we feel separated and then we feel like competing solo which is even worse than competing because at the least if we were competing in a team isn't it but competing solo alone we look outside for the perfect model to copy we just want to copy someone and that's crazy because we are complete inside ourselves. So I think that's my last slide. In my, well, go, going back to, um, to the subtitle of this lecture, you know, the magic of loving your enemy. In the beginning, like you will say envy and then the subtitle, the magic of loving your enemy. And then you say, oh, what does it have? It has to do one thing or the other. You know what? This subtitle doesn't seem to do much with the title of this lecture. But that's going to be, this slide now is going to be my take on what that means. What is the magic of loving our enemy? I've been talking about envy, envy in my, sorry, not loving my enemy, loving my neighbor. That's what it says. Uh, envy my, my neighbor. That's what we've been talking about. Envy, envy my neighbor, which is not the same as loving. So what does it mean loving my neighbor? What is the magic? So if I love my neighbor, would I be envy my neighbor? So neighbor. So what does it mean? And that's one of my favorite concepts and words and everything. So in my take, the magic of loving your neighbor is oneness. And this picture is to me perfect because it's exactly, exactly how I see, I mean, in a rational way or in um, when I stop to reflect, but as I said, that those feelings of envy and, and jealousy and stuff, they are in present in my life. I, I have those natural feelings as well. But when I reflect on oneness, that's what I see. I see all creatures. I see we all needing the same universe, creating in the same universe. We are all doing some different knots, but we are creating the same product, the same, you know, uh, whole thing. So if I look at this picture and I think if you are making a good knot, it's good for all. It's good for me too, because the whole thing is gonna look bad, it's gonna be stronger, isn't it? So whatever is your needing in your creation in the universe, I just want to celebrate it. And that's, I will have my creation. And as long as we all try to create the best way we can, I don't have to copy or envy your creation. And that's what honest means. And that's how I think honest fit in this topic. And that's the magic of loving your neighbor for me. And I think that's it. That's my message. Any question from the people who are here? Live today? <laughs> Not many.
Now, I understand when you're talking about um, competition and say kids in school, and the I understand the focus today is like uh, the envy itself that look at um, your or in, you know, in that kind of, uh, he's the best, I'm the worst, but um, just make me thinking. So do you think not too sure if we all know this answer, but like, do you think that in like encourage, like for example, in sports for kids, that subject, there is no way for everyone to be a winner. I think that would teach kids as well the the beauty as well that like winning and lose, you know, and um, look on on others, uh, the quality that others at the, at that moment are better, I'm not saying you are the worst or the loser, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm not sure if I, I understand what I want to question, yeah. <laughs> but on that uh, sense, you know, because um, those kinds of feelings are important for kids as well, for them to learn, because it's impossible for us to be like, oh, we need on that sense, but for example, in sports and things like that. But I'm not too sure it would fit in here because we're not but talking about I think my my take my in it's my take you now I, I know that you know in psychology irina would just have a full lecture on how important or not is this type of thing but for me is the question is why we have to have a winner why why we have to have a winner i think to set example of what is an improvement mm, but not, not really but no, 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 not, not in terms of competition, but in terms of, uh, of doing the things better or of, of open new fronts of, yeah. uh, of, uh, of encouraging people to actually um, um, work harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, you, I you, you can compare. So in this way, you can compare to yourself, you know, your improvements. But why you have compared to other? Because, you, you because it's a different perspective. Yeah, but I agree with G. I felt this quite often with the kids at school. Uh, we don't have to put grades in everything. And sometimes I think it doesn't really help. And yeah. simple things like they do reading and they have level books to read. So it already makes comparison between the whole class that even doesn't make sense. Like every book has a grade from one to 30 or something like that. So most of the time, they don't compare their own learning. They are comparing, I am on the 20th level of my reading and you are on the 23rd. But this itself doesn't mean nothing because they are not comparing their development. They are not trying to achieve a better learning. They are just trying to, to know who is the best on the reading, you know? And these kinds of things doesn't really make sense. I understand, okay, they want to put a level on the books to know um, and to help the kids to choose what better suits them. So why don't you just put A, B, C, and D and just grab from there instead of putting grades? Even when we receive the sheets from the, the school, when they evaluate, they evaluate the kids' learning, they make it the same way and it doesn't make sense. One of the things I do most of the time is hiding this from the, the kids. They never saw their own sheets because for me, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't add nothing to them know that I am on the level 24th on the reading it doesn't make nothing are you happy with your reading do, do you understand that when you become better you can read different books and learn better things and different things this is what really matters and not the level and i thought this across lots of things at school and they are so little and they already have this sense of competition that was brought to them from the school yeah it's reinforced by this school the society yeah. and so on I think, so, I think uh, it must it, have it, some reason. I, I don't think that I don't think that a bunch of pedagogists would be all wrong. It must have a reason for for this. And uh, one thing as well is, of course, it, it's very uh, difficult on the, on the, on the kids level. But in the adult level, is the level of appreciation of uh, first is the level of appreciation of what someone does. Do well, and also the, uh, the the which we going only you only learn when you get old like me. <laughs> it's to learn your limits, to learn that you are not good in everything, and someone else is better, and you are good in something, and then you 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 learn to appreciate someone else's abilities, 
and, and this is where we have sometimes uh, um, a hoard of funds of someone who does something good. It's appreciation, it's admiration for what someone do well. But, can but we, determined can we, of yours. Can we achieve this admiration without comparing? You know, that's the thing. The only can one is, just... it's the only one it's outstands. It's sometimes comparing, but yeah, you yeah, don't know. But how, how could you how could you appreciate someone being able to swim so quick if you don't put a competition? Or incentive someone that is moved by competition. So who needs appreciation? Hmm? Who needs appreciation? What do you mean by that? Needs appreciation. It's a who way needs, of it's a way needs, of who uh, needs uh, to be appreciated. It's a way. It's a way of uh, um, um, how can I say? Uh, recognize someone's abilities. You can say you did, you did you a really good be. job instead of saying you did the best job, and you are showing appreciation in both ways. Well, it's... I don't think I don't think showing appreciation is necessary. That's my thing. But that's a that's that's another lecture, isn't it? It's not that. But it, one thing kind of links in the other, isn't it? So who needs appreciation? Who needs to be appreciated? Who needs to be recognized? Do we need to be recognized? Should we need to be recognized? In an ideal world, no. But we're not in an ideal world. We are not in that. Utopia. Yeah, but we are. We are. We are walking. No, we're no, walking, we're walking towards there. No, I agree with you. No, no, that, that's the goal. That's where you should go. But if we start, but if we start, um, let's say, um, doing. Um, how can I say, practicing what is normal in an ideal world, in a, in a world that is not ideal, then we may not achieve good results. We may incentive um, um, certain behaviors or certain, you know, that it's not really present. Yeah, so so that's why it's so good to have those you know discussions and those lectures in this because that's that's maybe now it's time just to talk about and reflect. But we are walking and we are um, yes. uh, leading and going to a world you know that is more co co there is more collaboration and less competition, less cooperation, you know, more cooperation, less than, less than cooperation. So that's what we. We, we are going independently of individual situations or how I feel and you know, my envy and so on. We are. So it's and good to stop yeah. and, and talk about those things you now and, and just important. ask questions. Ask questions. Like Irina said, Irina is asking questions, questioning the way things are done in school. Many other people done, and there are many pedagogues that have a question. PSJ is, was on that question a lot and in other systems yeah. that have been created to, to, to make things different. But the pressure of our society is so uh, large, so big, and we are so based on this, the, this uh, successful model and society model is so based on competition that is, is, is a struggle. But we are here, you know, you are talking about it. But you said so Good. Let me tell you something. We need to be careful to not be carried on by utopic things. We are we we are not living in a utopic world. If you start acting as if we are living in an ideal world, we become utopic. And becoming utopic is probably not the appropriate way of living in this world. I give an example. Dorian, for example, my daughter. She was born to dance. She was born to dance. But if she dedicates only to dancing, she will not have, because support is not there. If we, we live in a world that there is no recognition, say oh, there is recognition, but not, never. She loves being appreciated. She loves the public clapping. She loves being the center of this stadium because she does very well what she loves. But unfortunately, if instead of being a dancer, love dancing, she was loving being a doctor, she would be maybe having a better life, but probably that's, this is not what she's looking for. So we might bury people that needs recognition, needs to have their, um, 
let's say their their abilities that are singular shown appreciated so they can inspire others and everything is the problem is the value the value you put in things this is can be corrupted this can be wrong and i agree with arena certain, certain things in school should not be leveled should not be compared just should be just shown this is the way you do it and and someone do well look this person do well look at if you want to 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 to, to do something well look at the person this is a natural but not putting in the pedestal or, or, or forcing people to do what they don't have abilities to do, right? And, and this can be det detrimental to a person's life, to other, to, you know, to maybe disincentivation or not incentivation uh, to, to other, um, others that may have some abilities that, that don't really call attention for anybody so they don't have the opportunity to, you know, do what they like. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure if I've been confusing, probably. <laughs> but I, got anyway. confused. <laughs> huh? I got a bit confused, but I think I, I, I understood what he said. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't mean living in a topic world, Jackson, but uh, every change needs a lead, you know, in oh, every yeah. change in the world would be have a lead. So the first thing is to start thinking about it and questioning. And that's what we are doing and other, other parts of our society um, are doing. And um, one day it's going to be different because everything changed. So, yeah. So I don't know if we going over time. So if anyone else wants to do any comment. Let me, let me tell another thing. I hate not being well articulated. And I admire someone who'd say three phrases and they convey the whole thought, which I cannot do it. <laughs> you just do your best. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen then. Oh, yeah. I love that picture. Yeah, it's you, want, you want me to leave the picture? <laughs> they are all, they are, they are uh, all I'll leave the picture while we, we have our prayer. They are so, all regions. <laughs> no, no, I, I just, I just, I think it um, represents very well the oneness and the collaboration and the creativity of all. Um, no, I don't know. I just like it. Yeah, they are common. To explain. I just like it. They are, they are from an Indian background, isn't it, Gisele? Um, not, not necessary, but yeah, you have some jewelries and stuff, but yeah. they're different stuff there. And I think they, they, try to, they try to represent some diversity as well. Yeah. All right, so should we move to our prayer box? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. So well, let's now, um, let's just breathe uh, for a moment, just a, a full breath, just to calm down and, you know, be in the moment and um, appreciate all this, this beauty of discussion, beauty of the opportunity to be here again in this group and um, exchanging our thoughts and learning with each other, sharing with each other. So let's just be grateful for that. And let it go. All the discussions, the topic, let's just go. And just let now elevate our thoughts. Let's focus on our own vibration, our own existence in this beautiful tapestry of the universe. Let's just see ourselves as part of this great creation and also as creators along with God and with God's blessings and instructions. So we are, and so we are now in this moment, we just are, nothing else. And with this feeling of peace, contentment, 
union. We then look inside ourselves and we remember all the loved ones, friends, all the names that we might have written or not. But at this moment, we can refer to them in our thoughts. As referring to them in our thoughts, we send them this vibration, this energy that comes from our, our inner self, which is only peace now. So that peace and light that we send to those loved ones that we can now remember. And also we're gonna extend this light and peace to all the other loved ones in this tapestry who we don't, we don't know the names, we don't know the circumstances, we don't know the reasons why there is suffering, doubt or fear, whatever they are, but they are part of this tapestry. They are part of our big group. So we send them our peace and light as well. And we wish and we intend for them to be comfort, comforted with God's love, for them to be strong in their journey. And we extend even more our intention of great, good, peace, love, light to the whole planet and to the planet itself, especially at this moment where there are so much uncertainty and fear and sickness around the world that seems no stop. So we are now sending the peace and light and love to the whole globe, to the whole earth, our more greater being a life being that we are part of, that we create on. Let's create love, peace, and light at this moment and just cover the whole planet with this energy that comes from inside us and multiply and expand infinity with this great feeling of gratitude for the opportunity to be here and do that because we know we can and we understand our place in the whole picture so so be it. Amen. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Giselle. Thank Rigato. you. See 